This week, the Don't Bothers become very bothered by Evan's betrayal. Meanwhile, Alex becomes a coach, Gordon Bombay becomes a better coach, Stephanie, she's the regular biatch that she normally is, and Nick is still just his lovable self. Get ready for some hockey, everyone. It's knuckle puck time. It's knuckle puck time! What the heck kind of a shot was that? You've never heard of a knuckle puck? Whoa! Crap! Crap! It's knuckle puck time! Welcome, everyone, to Knuckle Puck Time. I'm Andrew Apple. I remain David Hankla. And I'm Mark Winsky. This week, episode seven. They're actually getting good, but they have conflict nonetheless. So what does Gordon do? He takes them to the pond. Mark, what did you think of the pond this week? I thought it was good. I I, I mean, it was... Um... <sighs> you know what? Did I think it was good? <laughs> Did I? I'm going to take back that statement. I didn't. It 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 felt hokey to me. It felt very hokey to me. Not really grounded in, um, into too much. I guess it, it just felt kind of like let's build this team back up with hope and positivity and all this stuff. And it it it. Felt very fantastical in how they did it. All right. Mark's a curmudgeon this week. David, what do you feel? Yeah, I'm with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like this week, it, uh, it it was it was cotton candy. Um, you know, we have major problems with the team and Gordon's solution to them is uh, like oh hey like you know you can't play hockey inside fine let's go rediscover what the the real original magic of hockey was by going and playing on the pond which just happened to be the pond where he learned to play hockey that was behind his old house which did make me immediately wonder was this a public pond and he and his dad just happened to be the only ones on it or is he going on to private property right now with a group of kids <laughs> it's, yeah there were questions i had questions um Beyond that, I mean, there were multiple other little things in this episode that they needed to try and find a way to tackle, you know, substantial problems with the team, both interpersonal and in terms of skills. And uh, and the way that they solved them was uh, dumb. It was dumb. <laughs> so <laughs> it was dumb. And it was, it was dumb. 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 It was dumb. So yeah, so my my general take on this episode was that it happened, and it was my least favorite uh, of the seven episodes, which is a hard fall considering I thought that the previous two episodes were the best. Uh, so yeah, no, this episode uh, happened. Well, what you're basically saying is that this was the filler episode. Every series, oh yeah is going to have something where it's like, we have a 10 episode order. Then the writers are like, well, we need to spread this story out over 10 episodes. And that means there's going to be some stuff that just doesn't. Can we not just make it that blatantly obvious though? Like, can we at least try to put some, like just an ounce of passion juice inside of an episode? Because this was this i mean maybe I maybe i am a, a, a curmudgeon this week and i think it's justified i think if we are going in on a journey of a 10 episode journey sure th there has to be some some ups and downs there 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 th has to be some excitement and then some uh, not as exciting times, but this was, it was dumb. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, now admittedly, there were things in this episode that I enjoyed. Uh, yes. I, I, I enjoyed the entire line of Sam no longer feeling like being crazy because, uh, including his admission that he kind of had always done his crazy things because he didn't really know how to fit in. He'd never really felt like he was part of a team and that being nuts was part of how he got people to, to kind of pay attention to him and respect him. I was never really on a team before this. I'd go to school, I'd go to the mall, 
I'd skateboard down some big flight of stairs and then get yelled at by some adult. You were the first person who ever looked at me and said, we need what you've got. So when I heard that you were just gonna drop us, it was like, did any of that even matter? And then for Evan to betray them, he felt like that, that extreme high was just a lie. That it was just, that there was no point to him being who he's always been. Like, I, I liked that whole storyline, particularly the moment where they the team turned and looked and said, are you making an origami swan? And he said, it's a turtle. And immediately, oh my God, you broke Sam. Yes. Like there were some funny moments, you know, in that A story of all the team being mad at Evan. I liked that the checkmates were facing at each other and yelling at each other in check when the team separated into two lines because we don't know these characters at all. And I, we don't know if they speak English. So they're just yelling at each other about something none of the rest of us understand. And like, that's that's funny. Like, there were things in this episode that were enjoyable. I just thought that the actual progression of narrative was a largely a waste of our time. If there is somebody out there who does speak Czech, I would love to know what they were saying. I would love to know if it was <laughs> actual hockey banter or it was a debate versus it, in and out and Shake Shack. Well, uh, Which there is no debate, but... Right. <laughs> to, to kind of summarize the whole episode, anytime I'm doing my notes before we talk, I have it broken down into this part is A story, this part is B story. If there's a C story, I throw that in. And the great majority of the episode went by before I realized that there even was a B story. It felt like it was just A story that just kind of tied all the parts in and didn't bother to differentiate how things were running. After watching the whole thing- It was thing, just a story. It was just a story. Yeah, it was just a story. Just now, a story. <laughs> there kind of was a bit of a B story. Like the, the main A story is the Doth the don't bother is kind of working through personal issues, particularly with Evan. The B story was kind of Alex working through personal issues and, and self-confidence issues with and through Bombay. And the C story was kind of Sophie and Nick admitting that their relationship is not just a friendship, that it is in fact more. But uh, yeah, I mean, it just kind of all bled together. And the ending of this episode was <laughs> stupid. Just absolutely. I'm just glad stupid. I'm not the only one. I I thought I was gonna come on here today and be the curmudgeon and be like didn't like it, liked a couple things. I, I thought it was funny that they use an iPhone instead of the eggs, but also like no one would do that. No one would do that. That's silly. Well, that part. I thought that was, you know, we'll reference this more in the duck hunt. I thought that was an amusing update of soft hands with eggs. But yes, sir. And I agree with you. You really have to trust your teammates and your coach to be like, wait, so you're going to put my phone, a piece of hardware worth hundreds, arguably a thousand dollars onto the ice and you're going to hit it with a stick. Like that's that will absolutely void the warranty. Please be gentle. I'm very scared. I'm a te like I'm not quite a teenager yet. This is an essential part of my being. Uh, that that took a special level of trust. And if we're going to go along with the idea that they have that much trust for each other in Bombay, okay, that's still a reach for me. Um, the the ending that I was referencing that annoyed the crap out of me was Alex trying to get her mojo back in being the actual coach when Bombay is kind of stepped in. She tells all the players to put on blindfolds at one point so that they can feel the ice. They can feel their way around and where each other are. You know, just really use your other senses. And then for some reason at the end, despite the fact that that entire experiment was a proven disaster, like they fell over each other, they smacked into each other. Several of them looked like they almost might get hurt. Uh, Alex draws up a play for their miracle final moment attempt to beat the Hornets that involved all of them closing their eyes and shooting blindly, which is stupid. I mean, if you start or that Or was way, it genius? Or was it no. Mr. Miyagi genius? Nope, nope, it's stupid. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, 
if they had started blindfolded, like, you know, basically eyes shut to weird the other team out and then had <laughs> gone into some kind of an actual play, sure. But if I'm the other team, even at that age, yeah, I might have been weirded out, like, why are your eyes closed? And as soon as it started, I would have taken the puck and scored on them because they have their eyes closed, which makes them bad at things. Instead, <laughs> they somehow gently slid the puck from person to person while the other team just didn't move. And then bl- with their eyes closed, Maya shoots into the goal. I mean, it just it's a series of moments that you're just like, this is dumb. This, this other team is clearly very bad. Maybe they're just that good now. No. Maybe they're <laughs> maybe maybe the don't bothers are just that good now because Coach Bombay coached them, and that's a kind of a meeting that Coach Bombay can turn any team into an incredible team. No, nope. I don't think that he can turn any team into an incredible team. But one thing he actually has shown across the entire series even all the way back in the movies is that he is very good at figuring out what motivates people Mm -hmm. and using that to sort of push them into greatness like we saw that all the way back in the mighty ducks when he strapped goldberg goldberg to the goal because he knew that if goldberg had no choice but to understand that the puck could not hurt him he would become a much better goalie same thing with Koob in this episode where he's like oh my god every parent's worst nightmare the ice is cracking underneath you and all of a sudden Koob learned how to move with his feet you know all good things alex seems to be pulling that skill as well I agree that this was an incredibly stupid way to Mm -hmm. end the episode. But at the same time, it might have been the smartest possible thing that the writers did. Because there needs (laughs) to be a certain suspension of disbelief when we get to the finals that the don't bothers are actually good enough to play the ducks like we are going to have to totally use karate kid logic on this the karate kid logic was that he did an illegal kick at the end and no one called it i mean that that's part of the whole plot of cobra kai that the crane kick is a kick to the face when they establish from the start that the only kicks that are not allowed are kicks to the face so, hey, yeah, they're going to, you know, they're going to have some kind of Miyagi magic when it gets to the ending. Well, maybe you should build that up with magical absurd things like you did with Fulton Reed being able to hit a puck 100 miles an hour or <laughs> probably more to cut through a net. Or, 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 or Keenan, our namesake. Being, exactly. Being or, able to hit a namesake. knuckle puck. <laughs> exactly. If you're going to magic this up, magic it up. Don't just pretend that the other team will stand there confused when everyone on their opposite team closes their eyes and gently pushes the puck from person to person with their eyes shut. That's just weird. Maybe you start out that way and, you know, so you have a moment of distraction, but then you just pass it back to Sophie, who knocks it in because she's good. Yeah. Speaking of plays, will what episode will we see the flying V? The last one. Mm-hmm. There, there, there's no question. It'll be uh, against the Ducks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think so, too. Absolutely. No. It, it, you have to save the thing that everyone wants to see mm-hmm. until the absolute last episode. To put it in musical so theater that. terms, you don't have a Dina Menzel belt in the beginning of the song. She belts at the end of the song. Trying to, yeah. you know, be the Mark Whisperer here. No, I I understand th- th- that analogy and probably uh, ten other people will too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... What did you think of this episode? Let us know in the comments below if you're on YouTube or you can head over to knucklepucktime.com. Leave a comment on the show page or, you know, just leave it in your podcast player comments of choice. All right, guys. 
Let's jump into my favorite segment, the duck hunt. This is where we figure out all of the little Easter eggs that they dropped in there, every little nostalgic nugget that the writers decided to put in to warm our hearts in this episode that was admittedly somewhat lacking. So, David, what did you find? There were three that I found. One is the whole framework of the episode, the pond itself. Bombay's childhood rink that we see in the semi-sepia tone flashbacks in the original Mighty Ducks movie, where Gordon and his father would practice at the end of the day, which, yeah, okay, it's nice. We have that callback to, to Gordon's childhood and how he first learned to really love hockey. I also believe this is probably private property, so that's problematic, but hey, Maybe, uh, no, I got no maybe. The man is broke. There's no way he still owns that property. Um, two, as, which we've already referenced, is soft hands. You know, something that they, they went through in the first Mighty Ducks movie and a bit in D2. But historically, they used eggs. Now they're using cell phones. Clever evolution. I don't totally buy it, but it's clever. Uh, the third one is the one that I actually enjoyed the most because it happened just in a brief flash. It was the scene where Stephanie is hyping up Alex, saying, no, you know, I know you look to me as a mentor. No, I don't. You do. But she goes, no, you got to get out there. You know, this is your team. You're the coach. And Alex agrees with her and then says, you know, I will not be able to finish this tonight. And when she holds up the folder, they both work for Duckworth. Their law firm is Duckworth. So that's kind of charming that the law firm where both of them work is the law firm where Gordon worked way back in the day whose sponsorship earned the Ducks their name. That is a good catch, David. That gets a round of applause right there. Appreciate it. All right, Mark, what did you find in this episode? Yeah, yeah, I found similar things to David. And uh, this episode especially... Because the storyline was not my personal favorite, if you could not tell, it made me appreciate the orchestral backing scores more and and how those original Mighty Duck themes are coming back in during the games. And it's exciting to kind of hear that playback again and be like, oh yeah, these are Mighty Ducks movies. That was actually my only Easter egg that I caught as well. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I pulled that out of my ass, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I did hear it, obviously, but I'm also like, oh, shit, David, t- David took all mine. What do I got? Well played, Mark. <laughs> No, but that, I mean, that, that was the big thing. Like, that seems to be the biggest connection. Like, it's the same way that uh, the director of Superman Returns said, I will not take part in this reboot unless I get to use John Williams' original score. Hmm. Because he knew that the music was the thing that was going to connect his movie to the previous movies in the same way that the music is the main thing that's connecting the Don't Bothers to the original Mighty Ducks. That's what I think they're doing better than anything else, in my personal opinion. Now we're going to turn it over to you. Did you find any Easter eggs that we missed? Did you love the music? It. Did you love finding <laughs> out that the law firm that they work for is Ducksworth? Let us know in the comments down below. All right, guys. So I actually want to pick up and focus on a couple of smaller moments that happened in this episode because the big moments, as we said, were a a little ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Um, I was surprised by the scene where Stephanie and Alex have their confrontation because... Up until this point, you could kind of see it going either way. Like, maybe Stephanie is an oblivious person who doesn't realize how needy she is. Like, she doesn't realize that she's the worst. And in this episode, it became abundantly clear. It's like, oh, she knows exactly who she is. And she is playing 
3D chess right now because when she hears that all of a sudden the don't bothers who are on a winning streak, no matter how small, they are on a winning streak and suddenly they have the Minnesota Miracle Man as their coach, it became very clear that she is the kind of person who will do or say whatever it takes to make sure that she gets what she wants. That, that was not how I read that. That was interesting. Really? How, t- tell me, how, how did you read it? I read it as that Stephanie doesn't respect the don't bothers at all, but she, despite the fact that Alex works for her and she clearly views her as inferior, she does still like Alex. And on some level, when someone is that kind of insecure shark, though they're never going to let another person forget that it hurt them when they did something better than them. In this case, Stephanie will never, ever forget that Alex beat her in the slap shot competition, even if it didn't count. There is still a begrudging respect in that sense of just like, okay, yeah, you beat me at something. Like, I always liked you. I always thought, you know, you were pretty good. And then you showed me a little more than I thought. This is your team. I don't think your team's going anywhere. I think they're terrible, but you fought for this team. Don't give up on that. You showed me that you have more behind you than I thought there was. Why are you just going to walk away? Because I don't think she respects Bombay. I mean, if she respected Bombay at all, she would have invited him to the, the Spirit of the Ducks. I think she thinks Bombay is a loser. So the idea that Alex, who she now respects more than she used to, and always kind of liked, that she would step out of the way and let a loser be in charge? Nah, nah, that doesn't make sense. And in a selfish way, if someone who beat Stephanie at something that Stephanie is proud to be good at, if that person is inferior to Bombay, then that makes Stephanie feel worse about herself because she thinks Bombay is a loser. So no, Hmm. no, absolutely not. You don't let him coach your team. That guy's a loser. Yeah, he maybe was something, but I don't think anything about him now. That's your team. You go get it. I'm glad to see that you were the one who came at that from a more positive angle than I did, because I clearly didn't hate this episode nearly as much as you did. So it's nice to see you finding some positive moments in it. Mark, do you have any positive thoughts, negative thoughts, thoughts in general, musical theater references that nobody's going to get? I do do have to say that uh, I did see a bit of the optimistic side just because we've seen Bombay on such low levels during the show. Um, It was really nice to see kind of the show standing up for Gordon Bombay and be like, no, 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 no. He might be down on his luck these days, but he's still Gordon Bombay, the Minnesota miracle man who, who had some incredible moments and like that part of him is still ingrained inside of him. And I think that, that with that conversation, it, it did um, uh, give, Gordon that trust that he deserves all right well what did you think of that scene let us know in the comments down below whatever platform you're listening to it on or over at knucklepucktime.com all right guys let's jump into my favorite segment of the entire series the penalty box the penalty box this don't make no sense all right mark you're up what were your major grievances with the show that you haven't already griped about? I'm pretty sure I've said it. I I just didn't like it. I just didn't like it. I I don't really have any specifics. Um, I do. Per se. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pass it to David this time because I, 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 it's not that I gave up on the episode. It's not, because I didn't, but yeah, David, just go ahead. Cool. All right, so we've already mentioned that the final play is incredibly stupid, and that the pond, in all likelihood, is someone's private property. So, both of those, weird. 
There are two other things. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Go for it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Brought me up. I'm going to let you finish, David. But um, <laughs> it, it angered me so much that she forgave Evan so quickly after she quit the Ducks for that team because of Evan and is just like, well, you made a mistake. Be like, sorry, but bitch, no. Y- you gave up y- 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 your star team, star player scholarships, all this stuff because of Evan, and now he turns on you? That actually didn't bother me nearly as much as it bothered you because – We have to remember that we are dealing with a factor that the three of us have long since forgotten about as the old curmudgeons that we are, which is childhood. And the biggest difference in friendship that I can find between adulthood and childhood, especially when you're trying to make friends as an adult, and this is the reason why it's usually so difficult to make friends as an adult, is because when you are a kid, you tend to see people as structurally good. And when you are an adult, you tend to realize that people can suck really, really hard. How do you feel about that, Andrew? (laughs) I think it's horrible. And I also think it's the truth. Who's who's the real curmudgeon this episode, Andrew? (laughs) I wouldn't call myself so much of a curmudgeon. I call myself much more of a realist. Okay, that, well, that we'll makes you listen a back on your, yeah, yeah, you will listen back on this and, and, and listeners out there, if you feel like Andrew is the true curmudgeon of this episode, put it down in the comments and <laughs> we'll talk I'm about I'm not a misanthrope, I just hate people. Ugh. I just hate all people, they're all bad. Bah, 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 bah. I would like okay, to Andrew, take go, a moment go ahead. I'm sorry. to mourn. My childhood whimsy. This is the death of my childhood whimsy, dying right before you. As my wife and my dog currently try to recover my childhood whimsy by standing next to me, we have a cameo from my dog. who cannot hear any of the things other than what I am saying at the moment. (laughs) I love that he's out of focus. (laughs) (laughs) But with that, my friends, what were your general thoughts on the episode? What were your general thoughts on friendship? In... Let us know in the comments below. I have more things to complain about. Oh, wait, David <laughs> David got plenty more things. I cut him off. I'm less okay. you finish, David. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Okay, there were two more. One, in this episode, Bombay really started to take a uh, Han slash Yan style mentor role with Alex, mm-hmm. which is weird because he wants to date her. So that's weird because mentor roles are paternal. I mean, we've talked about Daddy Bombay before. This is a very different kind of Daddy Bombay. Wasn't nuts <laughs> about it. Don't get started. Yep. And then the last one. This one took a little research, but it annoyed the crap out of me. Very typical television-style writing. Evan gets the team to forgive him by saying the captain is supposed to be the leader and the example. I don't deserve to wear this C because of what I did. So that means that either no one is captain or everyone is captain. And the consensus seemed to be, great, so everyone is captain. (laughs) Do you know what the role of a captain actually is in hockey? The captain is the only player on your team who's allowed to talk to a ref to understand why the ref called a penalty. Coaches don't get to do that. The captain does, and then brings that information over to the coach and the team. So by having no captain, they now have no ability to talk to the refs. And if you say, well, now they're all captains. They literally can't be because goalies are not allowed to be captains. It is a rule in hockey that goalies cannot be captains. So what they've done. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I did some research. Uh, In fact, teams have C captains and then they have A captains, which are the alternates, Mm -hmm. in case the captain is on the bench, injured, or serving a penalty. But 
if you do not have a C or A player capable of going and talking to refs, you are not allowed to ask what just happened, get any explanation for a penalty, or have any ability to debate or discuss anything. You've just given that up. So for a nice sentimental moment of, I guess no one is captain now, which immediately I started thinking of Tom Hanks. Just look at me. Look at me. I'm the captain now. Um, throwback. Anyway, uh, for that nice sentimental moment, they've now taken on significant liability in literally every game. So, that point of me. order. Point of order. The refs don't know the rules to begin with in this series. Accurate. Does it really matter? All the more reason why you need to be able to ask them. Also, was what? this <laughs> was this a pro hockey rule? No, this is a, a hockey rule. hockey rule. This is a hockey rule. Now, it may not be an enforced rule anywhere except the minor leagues and NHL, but it is absolutely a hockey rule that goalies cannot be captains. That's been the case since like 1940 something. And only the captain or the alternate captain is allowed to go and speak to the refs. Okay, fair point. So, great. Yeah, nice little maudlin moment. <laughs> now no one's captain, or maybe we're all captain. Who knows? Blah. You know, it gave Nick the, the great moment of being able to go like, oh, cool. My moms are going to be so proud. I'm keeping the C. Like, there were adorable oh, little things around oh. that, but. Oh, ah. Nick's, Nick's background photo. That killed me. That, that was funny. Me. I died. It Am was I the such background on your phone? What? Yeah. Huh? Huh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, as always, oh. Nick was delightful. He was always delightful. And I did like, and I guess this is kind of some of my final thoughts at this point. I liked that we finally understood how the team didn't have a thousand goals scored on them per game before they started, you know, getting better. Mm -hmm. We had theorized in a previous episode that that was because, um, uh, did, I just blanked, Sam was an insane person who was just throwing himself in front of the goal again and again. And this <laughs> week we got to actually see him do that. You got to see him yell X Factor and just <laughs> wing himself in front of the goal, which good. That makes sense. That would explain why he's actually a very valuable player besides the fact that he's, you know, fun and we like him as, as part of the team dynamic. He's a great defender. You also make a great point. Like the thing that I think they did very well in this series as a whole is that I legitimately like every single member mm -hmm. of the don't bothers. Like yeah. every one of them is their own Absolutely. special ingredient in the special sauce that makes the team work. I mean, I thought Logan was at his most charming of the entire episode. I really enjoyed the part, you know, just, just the, the little moments in between the characters where you're like, you know, we just saw Logan and Emily have a high five, all the, mm -hmm. just the little things like that to show that they are more than a team. Right. I like that. I did like that. They managed to find ways to create punchlines out of the fact that over the course of the season, you can only have each child actor on camera so much. I like that. I like that. They figured out, ways to just have little jokes out of that like logan being deeply upset that he wasn't invited to the sleepover that was fun it's like every I'm swedish fish i'm was your, an arrow I'm in my your heart. neighbor <laughs> I'm your i neighbor. live across the street like, okay that was a very big penalty box for me actually now that you bring that up okay. because they had already said he was out of town oh that's right uh, and that's, that's right. why he was because he was not in that episode at mm -hmm. all Mm. Well, he still wasn't mm. invited. He still wasn't invited. Like, but how could he, he see go. them eating Swedish fish all night if he wasn't in town? Does he have his a camera, camera on, on his front door? His ring? His his ring doorbell? I mean, to be fair, it wouldn't shock me if his dad like had a ring camera just like quietly watching from his room, hoping for the day that Logan's mother returns. Like, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, when are we gonna see more more of him and and his story? Will we? Because they made it such such a big point of that past episode that he was divorced and all these things, and he's hurting, and then we never saw him again. 
I mean, there's only so many storylines and the episodes are only half an hour long. I get it. It's a setup for, for future interactions. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you that he's he's potentially interesting. All of the, the parents are potentially interesting. I still like just the spite of Maya's mom, just like <laughs> New York. Just just the sour apple face of just like, Ugh, how could you possibly think anywhere but New York is is worthy like they're interesting characters, but we already have, frankly, too many characters, and you got to find a way to give them enough time so that we care about the main ones, and then the other, the, the kind of third tier, that they they just kind of add spice. No, they're the yes. lime on the taco, not the meat or the cheese. Also, please do note there were, in fact. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but there were no guest stars in this episode outside of our core teammates. Like, we didn't have any parents. We didn't have anyone besides the extras in the stand, honestly. And that that usually happens in at least one episode every season because if you want to do something big – in a TV series, like we talked last week about Sweeps Week, normally what you have to do is you have to reserve your budget from another episode and make that one a little less expensive so that you can make your big episode just a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. This was probably the episode that cost them a little bit less, and that's okay. Yeah, I can see that. I'm yeah. shocked. My, yeah. my I mean, they, guess... they, they literally didn't even record in the hockey rink. They did. They, they did the absolute bare minimum on this episode. I think. I think. I'm just gonna take it to my final thought. That's what they did. They said there. What uh, is this episode seven? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven. Yeah. So they got. Three they more said. To go. Well. Yeah. They probably said. Well, guys. Uh, we can't just like skip an episode, can we? No, Bill, we can't. We can't skip an episode. Uh, well, really? Can we? No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's a number. It's got to be in there. All right, so. Bill, Bill. All right, he, hear me out. Why don't we do a clip show? Like, all right, let's just all make right, episode seven you. a clip show. Okay. No, 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 no. We've done that before. It didn't work. Not enough clips. What else? Space be what D three was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what else you got, Jim? What else you got? I'm going to stand by that. The D3 was effectively a clip show wrapped in a plot that no one actually understood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just clips pulled from other late 90s movies <laughs> that were pieced together into some sort of coherent plot <laughs> with about three days worth of pickups to get mm -hmm. actual shots of the team. But... Anywho, yeah, I don't really have any other final thoughts. Um, oh, and we lost Mark. Well, sounds like a good time to wrap it up. Where the fuck was I? <laughs> it's like the Family Guy scene where they do the uh, Chris goes into the world of Aha's Take On Me music video. <laughs> Chris, where'd you go? I don't know. Well, that was a decent impersonation. Anywho, shall you. we wrap this up? Yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> David, let's hear your final thoughts then. Uh, my final thoughts was this is the, the episode I enjoyed the least. The fact that I still enjoyed parts of it and didn't find myself angry at the episode just kind of was like, oh, that's not very smart. Oh, that's kind of a waste. Oh, that's stupid. But like, it was always kind of good natured in my criticism. Uh, I think that is a great endorsement of the series overall, that even at its lowest, it is still charming. Uh, I hope that no more episodes are this um, charming. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to move on to next week's episode, which hopefully, you know, will have a point. You, you didn't watch the trailer for next week's episode? I did. I did. It's it's Alex going the Captain Blood direction. So, you know, we're going to get that first phase of D2. Okay. Again, like so much of the show and part of why we talk about it. 
is that this show is built on nostalgia. So, of course, they're going to tap into all of the different things that we saw and loved from D1 and D2. That's just how it operates. It's going to be interesting to see if they put any kind of modern spin on it, any kind of, you know, mom versus Bombay style spin on it. It's going to be interesting to see if Bombay calls her out on it or if he's like, yeah, I remember that guy. That guy was successful. He bought a duck whistle. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, I've been saving it for 25 years. Here you go. Just in case. Exactly. So, yeah. So this episode happened and there were moments. Mark? Well, while I was gone on my journey, <laughs> I saw a bright light. And then they said, no. No, you must go back to the podcast. And oddly enough, the voice sounded just like Dave Carp. <laughs> and he said, here's why David Henkla owes me $10. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's flipping it. He, he said, he said, Henkla I know owes it was him. his story. We've been hearing the wrong story the entire time. Oh my God. It's we been a lie. Either. And here's why. He told me that. <laughs> and Mark froze again. I no, he didn't. It was a fake freeze. It was a fake freeze. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> uh, my final thoughts, right? Again, didn't love the episode. David said charming. I say lazy. Um, but needed. I think it was needed. You, yeah. You're right. The past two, two, two episodes were beyond expectation. And I think the mm-hmm. rest of our episodes can only go up for here, from here to bring us to a finale of epic duck proportion. All right. Well, we will leave it there. Uh, Please let us know what you thought of this episode, the good, the bad, and everything charming in between. As always, we appreciate any support you can give us, any hitting of the like button, any subscribing that you can possibly do wherever you are enjoying this. Please know that we appreciate it. Um, But before we go, if I may, uh, I would like to start just a brief new segment where we read comments from our previous episode. Hmm. So this comment comes from another person on YouTube, literally. That is his name, another person. Personal penalty box. This is about last week's episode. Personal penalty box. Why no Fulton Slapshot? So in an interview with Emilio, he brought up that Joshua Jackson and Kenan Thompson were in discussion to come back, but due to COVID pressure, which ended up making them stay a month to shoot for at most five days, it's understandable. Also, would be interesting to see a duck that didn't return in D2 jesse hall for example to come back and have an in-universe explanation for why they never came back what will the checkmates bring to the table will we have them for the rest of the season as shown in the preview for the next episode in the actors imdb and if we get season two will they be promoted to series regulars we'll have to see So that was from another person. Thank you, another person. We appreciate uh, you taking the time to leave a comment. And you uh, get our duck call of the week. I have lots of sounds, and I want to use them in as many ways as possible. (laughs) But with that in mind, thank you all so much for watching. I have been Andrew. I remain David. And I'm Mark Winsky. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Go, go.